All right. Uh, my name is Brian DeYoung. I work for Lockheed Martin doing geospatial data processing. So I'm going to give you guys a quick little introduction to geodata uh, raster processing and subpixel indexing. So uh, to start with, uh, we'll talk about some basic uh, file format stuff and array stuff. Whenever we're working with a file or a, an array uh, for a raster image, we usually store it in one dimension, but we treat it as a two-dimensional array. Uh, it's a pretty trivial process to take a width of an image and go back and forth between row and column and index into a one-dimensional array. Get that out of the way. Um, I need an example for you guys, so I was going to just draw something on the board real quick to show how we do uh, mapping from geospatial data and getting some pixel accuracy, and I needed to do uh, the simplest thing that I could do. So here's my one diagram. That's a pixel. Simple. <laughs> Uh, once we've got that image, it's a one by one image, unsigned char, uh, one band, grayscale. Uh, to do geospatial processing on this, we need to have something that tells us the area of this image, because when we have a pixel from a satellite image, that maps to an area on the Earth. To do that, uh, we need to store some metadata with our image format. How many people here have heard of TIFF? Almost everybody. It's a widely used format, and it's made to be extensible. There is an extension to the stiff TIFF specification called GeoTIFF. How many people have heard of GeoTIFF? One person. That means it's very unlikely that if I say something wrong, that you will call me out on it before I am unmiked and off the stage, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so inside of the uh, GeoTIFF spec, they basically have added metadata components into the file header information that tells you some information for how this pixel maps to the Earth. That information are things like Projection. What is a projection for geospatial data? It's something that tells us where a point is on the Earth. Most of us know at least one projection. We learn it when we're pretty young in grade school, and we use it in GPS, latitude and longitude. It's based on the World Geodetic System, 1984. Uh, it can be indexed by EPSG code 4326. Uh, it gives us latitude and longitude. That's a coordinate that's on the Earth somewhere. Uh, the other thing that we get from that GeoTIFF header is an origin for our image. It's usually the top left corner. That tells us where our image is located. And then there are an X and Y resolution. Uh, those are usually in arc degrees for WGS84. Uh, but those are complicated to work with, so I'm just going to say meters to make this simple. Let's assume our one pixel image is 5 meter resolution by 5 meter resolution. That means this pixel covers a 25 square meter area. Once this thing covers an area like that, and we have that information from our file, we need to be able to take a coordinate in WGS84, latitude and longitude, which lives somewhere in that pixel, and figure out what the value of that pixel is. So we can take our origin and our resolution x and y. We can build an affine transform from that. And that will get us a coordinate transformation that we can use to go from latitude and longitude to a floating point x and y pixel coordinate. Then there are a couple different ways that we can translate that and figure out a value of this. If you've got a larger image, you can do uh, all kinds of different uh, adjacent transforms, uh, resampling algorithms. I'm just going to go with the simplest one, which is nearest neighbor. So all we have to do is take that floating point coordinate and do floor on both of those things. And now we have an index for a row and column, which we can transform into an index into our array. But that doesn't go backwards if we've already truncated our value. We need to retain that as a floating point coordinate system. Um, this gets even more complicated when you start throwing other coordinate systems in here. Sometimes you want to reproject this thing into another coordinate system that's got a rotation on it, um, or sometimes some sort of other translations. When you do that, you need to be able to take this thing and resample it in different kinds of ways. Uh, so once you're in the middle of this thing, uh, you might have to um, do some different kind of math to it. Uh, I got off track there for a second. Um, there's another interesting thing with this that I wanted to try and share with you guys real quick. I've only got a little bit of time left. Um, another type of data that we work with outside of imagery data is elevation data. We work with something called a DEM, a digital elevation model. Um, when you're working with a DEM, there's another flag inside of that GeoTEF specification that tells you whether your data is pixel is area, which is what we just talked about, or pixel is point. Why do we do pixel is point? Well, if you treat this entire 25 square meter area as a single elevation value, you end up living in Minecraft. <laughs> and if we lived in Minecraft, we would destroy the ski industry in Aspen. <laughs> so uh, that tells us a point in the middle of this image, which is a height. 
Uh, and then we can use that to build from our adjacent pixels if we had a larger image, uh, terrain mesh that we can then drape imagery on top of. That's basic crash course, time's up. <laughs>